Hi Mark Savage here, welcome to my channel. Been a little while since I've been in the shed, but the mic on this GoPro 5 picks up everything outside, so at least in here you can hear me. And be doing this again today. Now, why is this back in my shed? Well, I actually sold it, um, and I was very happy. It did all the things I thought it should do. It started, it stopped, it rode up and down the road. The guy purchased for me, an older guy, and he contacted me and said it was really slow. And I thought what had happened is the rollers, and I've said this before, if you leave a bike for months and months and months, the rollers can settle. They weren't opening up, needed new rollers. So I simply went over there, got some rollers. But then this little GY6 engine, it's a Peugeot V-Click. Same as the Barration, the Pulses, and all these general shaped bikes, same engine. I don't like working on them, I had a few, but they suffer from electrical problems, and the worst thing is they're intermittent electrical problems as well. So it does it one day, doesn't do it the next day. So this guy, I realised he kept using the kill switch, and then he was trying to start the kill switch with off, then it was flooding, then he realised that, then it wouldn't start, so there was some start problems. I got over there and found that, not only that, the, all of a sudden, I changed the rollers and had no spark on electric. I had spark on kick, but not electric. You know, wiggled some wires around, eventually got it kick-started, it ran okay, went to hide up the road, and it had a very slow puncture, and all of a sudden the wheel moved, you know, and the tyre came off, and I had to take the back wheel off. To get that, you've got to move the exhaust off, literally, then get it out. When you've got the tyre pumped up, it won't go back on, because of the frame, you've got to sort of wiggle. Honestly, they're not designed very well, and it's just fucking annoying. The rollers, I mean, I've, I've used my um, claw hammer trick for years and years, and it's worked on every bike I've ever worked on. But it doesn't work on these. They've got like a plastic ring round them. This is what you buy, and you attach it to the actual frame with some washers and a couple of bigger bolts, and that will hold it. But to be honest with you, I've got an impact gun now. Seconds. Put it on there, off, back on again. No hassle, no worries, and I strongly suggest everybody use an impact gun if you have. If you can't in the speed fights, guarantee the claw hammer works on that and also works on the air boxes and stuff like that. But it won't work on these little GY6 engines. That's bloody annoying. I'll bring you a little box with me. It's typical, went over there, forgot the impact, had to go back again. Um, but what else is it doing? Now, it was running but really slowly. You could feel it pulling back. Someone has set the carb at three half turns. It's 4T, it should be 6 and then back in again. Um, so then we found this it was actually just dangling down, it was being blocked by the frame. I pulled it off, and bugger me, the thing shoots along now at 30 miles an hour just by taking a small air pipe off. Which now I've realised instead of that way, it should have gone that way up, and there's a little hole at the side which actually sucks the air in there. So I'm going to put this back on and then I'm going to tune it. So today we're going to be tuning it, but I want to find out why the electric start does and doesn't want to work. Now, when I said to him, went up and down the road, I said, turn the bike off. He pressed the starter. I said, what are you doing? He went, what? I said, you're starting it. Don't do that. Oh, he went. And then I see him flick the switch. He said, well, use the key. Don't use the on and off switch. I found it just knackers the CDIs, and I mean that. It does. Some might say it won't, but it does. Um, so that's why now, I think where he kicked it out and the Bendex came out onto the start, I think it's jammed, because now I've got nothing. Kickstart first time, though. So I'm going to have the side off, we're going to look at the CDI, look at the carburetor, we're going to be getting this apart today, so that's what you're going to watch. While we're on about parts, Euro scooter parts, bloody amazing, really, really good company, I often get asked where to get scooter parts from, and for these little bikes, Euro scooter parts. And the reason why I'm not getting nothing for it, but the reason why I suggest them, is I run, sorry, I ordered off at eBay, 10.30 in the morning, I had it the next morning. When I wanted the rollers, I ordered them, I got home about half past six, um, Wednesday, Friday morning, so it was really, when they came in Thursday, I had them Friday. That's what you want, you know? Now, I bought a starter motor for this from a different company, and it took four days. You don't want things taking four days, it's just, it's just shit, I don't want things. Chine's even worse. Now, the air rocks I've just done, popped in for the MOT, and the disc was warped. I didn't really use the front brake going there, such a short journey. When I came back I used it, I could feel it, it was like judge judging. So it failed the MOT on it, I got another one coming. Now I didn't buy new, um, there's no sense in buying new parts if 
you're not going to make the money out of it. I paid £80 for a new disc. What's the sense of doing that? It's all the profit gone out of it. So I found one for £14, um, nearly new. <laughs> Recycling, upcycling, saving the environment. I don't care what you say, but that's what I used it for. And that was Wednesday. So I contacted the seller and said, look, mate, when can I have it? And he went, oh, I'll post it Friday. It'll take a week. Well, I'd rather give him a cut of the pound and at least post it to me early. So I've got to wait a week for that one. And I've got someone chomping at the bit for the Aerox, so that's bloody good. Now, I did get my decals for this little one. There they are. Luminous green, well, they're called lime. So you're going to see them on the bike if I uh, get the bloody thing running properly. I'm pretty sure... Well, should we see, shall we? Let's just see if I kickstart it, because it's like... Electric's not working. I need it to be able to run. Oop, hello. That's freezing cold. Bang, that's what he wanted. I need that to do that on electric. Now, on the side stand, there's a sensor. Two wires go into there. On the breach, there's three wires. A bit more odd, but this one's got two wires. I disconnected it and plugged it into itself. It's made for the stand, but the amount of times you leave that stand, or you might use it, and the actual button on it goes wrong. The next one is the kill switch. Now, two wires one side, orange one this side. I'm going to cut that to make sure it doesn't work. Because I can't have it. Once, once you try and start a bike for ages, and you've got no electrics at all, because obviously he got the kill switch, it floods, and it just messes the bike up. So I'm going to cut that wire, make sure it works, and put it all back together again so he can't use a side stand, nor the kill switch. You've got the key, you don't need these on these bikes. I'd rather they spent a few pounds more on getting the engine better, rather than these poxy little extras that you just don't need. Just don't need them. And I'm going to put this back on, and I'm going to tune it. Now I know that there's a little hop top there, it does go in, that'll get some nice fresh air from there. Um, and that will make him happy as well because I pulled this off. He's like, Oh no, rainwater will get in on a small hole under a frame at the front of the bike. No, no, it doesn't. I mean, no, the speed fights don't do that either, and they run really, really well without this link pipe, except the white one I had, which had to have it. This is what I've tried to say many times before generically, a one size doesn't fit all. My videos are there to help you. The claw hammer works 99% of the time. Use an impact driver if you can't do that. Um, taking the washer out works on speed fights, but it most certainly doesn't help when you're using an air rocks. They're just generic. So remember, if you've got a running bike and you fuck around with it and then it's no longer running, put it back. Don't put bloody big bore kits on. You know I've got a video out there saying 70cc kits, and people do these to these as well, put 80 kits on them and 150cc ones on the 100 cc it doesn't last, unless you're willing to upgrade the plug, only one heat, but then you've got to tune, no, you need a new carburetor, a bigger carburetor, 19, 20 mil, what you can use, then you've got to check, then you've got to tune, there's so many things, air filter, so many things you've got to mess around with, uh, if it's 2T, more oiling and stuff like that, I just don't last, rather you keep it at 50, 100, 125, and then mess around with it that way, but I do try and help when I say to guys, have you done all this stuff, you know? because they've made this way. They spend a lot of money doing it, you wouldn't think it would. Right, let me get on with this. This is going to be a bit of a long video, and I'll cut it little bits, and then try and make sure it's not too boring for you. Um, but let's get the seat up. That's just four screws. Get that out. I'll show you that. Put this back on. Show you where the uh, air petrol mix is. Um, and then we're going to tune this, and I want to get the side off. To be honest, I think I want to investigate the starter motor first. Now, as I showed you, this did take five days. I actually sold it before it even came. Um, person was interested in it straight away but I'm going to fit this today brand spanking new one because the wire on the old one comes out and it could be shorting you just don't know let's get this and this is piss easy isn't it look two bolts I'll show you down here let's get on with a couple of four things that we're going to get on with start a motor check the relay charge the battery check the bendix on that side show you the rollers are carburetor so just take the air box off Two bolts and undo that carburetor. And there's a start motor, eight mil, and there's an eight mil just under there. But this is what I don't like about these engines. Look, 
two wands dangling, don't know what they're for, no idea, do you know? And this was from this starter motor, look, can you see that? That could be arcing out there. But that's as simple as that, we're going to change that and get that off and put the new one on there. Now the carburetor, just there, I don't think whatever angle I try and put it at, you'll see it any better, but it's there. I'll get a screwdriver on in a minute, we'll do that in a minute anyway. This is just simple to get off. There's the one bolt, the other bolt goes there, that holds the air on, air box on. I must admit, they're easy to work on. But just odd, you've got no spark, then spark, no spark, spark. I mean, there's your HT coil goes there. This wire, WD-40 everywhere. Let's just get on with this. So, here we are. You're going to have to use this cable because the new one doesn't come at the same end. So I strongly suggest a long bar, and I say this on the speed fights, a long bar much easier. Don't try and get in there, you're never going to get. Straight from the other side and straight out, really easy. So, here's the start motor. Why does it fall off? There's the other one, going to be perfect fit, except the cable it comes with. You have to swap that over. I mean, they are generic. This is the cable you need, we're going to clean it up as well. But what's wrong with this? Well, I noticed, look at that. That touch is there, that's arcing out, it's going to earth out. And that's what may cause all your problems with the starter relay in the first place. So, we're getting rid of that. I mean, how? That's just tacky, isn't it? Why it should have moved out, I don't know. Maybe when this spins around, it might jump it a little bit. Or vibration. But we're going to get that off, swap that over, put the new one in. Then check the starter relay out. And clean these wires up. So there's your starter. Wire simple connected. And look how easy that is. It just fits in. Like that. And then you put that wire back in there. We've got two bolts. How piss easy is that? Look. One bolt in there. It just tightens up. And this one I'm saying it's so much nicer to come in from this side here and get straight in there. Having a few connections means a bit wiggly woggly so it means it does turn nicely. But you try and get in there any other way and it's not going to do it. Do not do one side up before the other. So just do that one like that pop this one in under there and then tighten that one up plug it back in and we'll see what happens so this is the problems you get with these kickstart first time every time electric start no just go did 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 won't, won't electric start whatsoever it's a new starter new starter relay everything's connected won't do it and yet kickstarts first time every time they hate you why is the front off? Well, I wanted to disconnect this safety switch. But as usual, the bolt just there. It's fucking rounded. Balls. Now I've got to drill it out, take it off, and hopefully grip it inside, and then get it off. I've just got to drill it out and re-tap it. Come on, why are they just made so shit? Every single bolt you seem to go to tighten up is loose and then you tighten it a few few millimetres more and it snaps. Not happy. I did, however, take off the CDI and I've cleaned all the terminals up there. Uh, let me show you that. There was your CDI. It was uh, cable tied too close to the engines. I've put it back to where it should be I reckon. I mean it should be under here, but it doesn't even fit. That's just start a relay um, That's all nice and clean. The fuse is okay. I've got a jump pack um, to give it some more boost But it just doesn't have it. It just doesn't have it and I don't know why brand spanking new starter in there Now you know how much I hate cable ties. I had to do it. It snapped It just snapped so now it's all secure. Let me add well, I've got to drill that bolt off of there, the, the, the uh, bolt in there, drill it out and then put a new one in there, cut the little safety wire off, I'll just be happy knowing that it can't accidentally switch it off and then be kicking like an idiot. Remember to use a big drill bit because you want to take the head off, you don't want to go down there, so that should be enough for me to get hold of and get out. So, always use a big one. Here's my problem now. Two to the starter, nice and easy. But there's two wires, I thought it was three, two wires. Now I don't know whether that 
connects or disconnects them. So if I cut one and it starts, happy days, and I'll test it. If I cut one and it doesn't start, then I'm sort of buggered. Now don't cut them here, cut them here so you can reconnect them. That's my top tip. Don't do it close to the source. Makes sure you've got lots to play with and you can electrical take them back up. So I'm going to go for disconnecting it completely. Two wires, just cut them. And if it starts, then it's fine. That's what it is. It's like a, an earth breaker, I guess. Um, or if I cut one and it doesn't start, I might have to connect them both together and then see. But I'd rather cut it rather than connecting them first. Okay, tested all over and done with. It is the black and my eyes are bad. Pink, burgundy, blood red, I don't know. Cut that wire. Now this switch does not work. Much better, much safer. Didn't need it, used the key. And now I've got two Allen bolts to go in there to connect it together, just to show you proof in the pudding. Now what I did was I connected it. I do the hard work so you don't have to. I connected it. Remember it's a bit of a bugger to start because you've got all this loose and it's not electric starting for some fucking strange reason. Um, it's on and... There you go, look. Happy days. I'm just much more happy knowing now that he can't flick that with his finger accidentally. And then you're electric starting for ages, kick starting for ages, whinging and moaning to realise it's all fucking you because you accidentally turned it off by your thumb. I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> I just, I still do not know why <laughs> it's not electric starting. Even when warm, now I'm charging the battery. Um, I'm going to go over every connector I can, but that doesn't make any sense why it's not got enough spark. I mean, it could be the stator coil not giving it enough um, boost when you turn it round, but gives enough. Could even be a slightly faulty spark plug. Um, you know, it could be a, a mirror of little things, but it does run. I'm going to whack it all back together now and see what it does up and down the road, making sure it does more than 15 miles an hour. So... Let's get on with it. So it is all back together. It's solid. This doesn't move. Seat's back on nicely. All the panels are on back on nicely. Uh, yeah, I'll just start a few little decals on there. Um, electric start, no. Um, kick start. Choke. I think they sound a little lawnmower, don't they? <laughs> right, I'm just going to zoom up and down the road on it. Let's um, have a quick look on the outside of it. Yuck, but I mean, they're purposeful. Um, it'll do. I should have hair dried these off, but you know, I've just lost complete heart in this bike completely. <laughs> tire stayed up, which is brilliant. That's on properly now with cable tires, I said. I put the little vent in there, but do you know what? I've not connected it. I've left it off and I've just poked out the top there and put the other pipe that's supposed to go in there. Oh look, make sure you haven't got any extensions for the cancel. That's what they do. Which is what beat about it. And I'm not. I don't understand why it won't electric start. Maybe a new plug might help. Um, but electric start just turns it all over and gives you a spark. Why would a kickstart give you a fresher, bigger spark than the electric? Would that be static coil? Uh, not give enough power? I mean, the battery is chucking out 12 volts. Uh, actually, 12.5 is a really good battery. Uh, I put a jump pack to it, still wouldn't electric start. Now, yesterday when she was warm, she electric started after like 10 minutes, she would electric start, otherwise just kickstart. So, disconnected the kill switches. I have tuned the carburetor. Gonna go for a ride, happy days, job done. My recommendations if you have a GY6 engine is if it's running great, if it stops running, burn it. No, maybe not. Watch a couple of my videos and you'll see how much torment I go through and you have to decide whether you wanna go through that as well. 
gloves are off. Have a hot day. Please like, share and subscribe. You'll never see that bike again.